молиться и попросить Святого Духа для того, чтобы Он помог нам воспринимать эту весть. Just bow your heads uh, with me. Пустите, склоните вашу голову вместе со мной. Heavenly Father, we just ask you to please send your Holy Spirit once again. And help us now as we go into the Bible and imagine Jesus' ministry here. Help us to see how we can make also follow in the example that he did, make a beautiful healing ministry in this community. So we want your name to be honored and we pray that um, you will guide us in our thoughts as we learn from you, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, so um, I want you to open your Bibles in the book of Matthew. In the chapter 9 of Matthew, in verse 35. I want to imagine if Jesus lived here today. It was just about 2,000 years ago that he was here. But I wanted to imagine, before we read this chapter, that he was a walking around here in Jerusalem. Maybe you might recognize this place, I don't know. This, this is in a tank of Bethesda where actually, if you go underneath where the waters were right now, it's kind of low, but this is where some of his miracles were performed. A day in Jesus' ministry, it was a busy day of healing. And in fact, if you read this verse, verse 35, he says that Jesus walked through the towns and the villages. Imagine if he was here, he would come on Sabbath into a synagogue or today maybe he would come here to the Adventist church. He would be teaching, proclaiming the good news, and then he would be healing, as it says here, every disease and every sickness. And, you know, if he was today, there would be people following him, just like in his day. And here in verse 36, it says that when he saw all that crowd, he would have compassion for them. If he saw all the immigrants coming to Israel today, from Ukraine, from the Philippines, from Africa, from Russia, he would say, I see your affliction. And 
It says that here in church, verse 36 that he saw that the crowds were harassed, that they were helpless. He saw that they were like sheep without a shepherd many times. And so this is Jesus' day. It said in the book Minister of Healing that he spent much more time to heal than he did to preach and to teach. So I want to invite you with, to go with me to Luke in the chapter 8 of Luke. And this is one day in the life of Jesus. So you can have an idea what he was about. It says in chapter 8, the verse 22. By the way, this is the... Do you recognize this? The Galilee Sea, right? Yeah. Or the Lake of Galilee, how you want to call it. <laughs> so he, in Luke 8.22, told the disciples, let's take the boat and let's cross over the lake to the other side. And in verses 26 to 39, it describes what Jesus saw as he left the boat and he came with his disciples, he found a young man. He went to the town of Genezare. The town of uh, Gerasenes, where the Gerasenes were on the other side. And there in that town, he found a young man who had been afflicted, being possessed. He was a demoniac with many, many demons possessing him. Because of that, he had been cutting himself. He was, uh, the enemy was destroying this man's body. And as you read in Luke 8, 22 to 39, we're not going to read the entire verse, but you see the story in what Jesus did. He came, he healed this man, and he became sane after that. In verse 39, it says people couldn't believe he was healed. He didn't seem the same man. After he was healed, he wanted to follow Jesus, but Jesus said, Stay in this town and share with everybody what I've done for you. After that healing, Jesus told the disciples, now let's go back. And then they crossed the river back to the other side of the lake in Capernaum. Now, when he arrived, and now you can go to chapter 8, verse 40, it says that as they arrived back, a man called Jairus met him. And he said, Please come help my daughter. She's very sick. Please. And Jesus said, okay, well, let's go. And he started to go and the crowd following him. The crowd was so big and Jesus was going slowly because of that. 
настолько большая, что Господь очень медленно продвигался вперед. And the Bible tells us in the same chapter 8, but now verse 43 to 48, that in the middle of that slow walk, a woman saw Jesus. Now, she had been sick for 12 years. She had hemorrhages, bleeding that no doctors could fix. And it says in verse 43 that she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I can be healed. So she did that. She touched him, and sure enough, immediately she was healed. And then Jesus felt it, and he said, Somebody touched me. The disciples said, Everybody's touching you, Lord. There's this crowd. He said, No, this is a different touch. Healing came out of me to someone. Now, because of her bleeding, this woman had been rejected by the society because of the laws of the day. She was not clean. So she did not want to be noticed. But now Jesus is asking, who touched me? She was very afraid. She said, I did, Lord, I touched you. And Jesus used that moment not only to heal her physically, which she was healed physically, but also to heal her soul so she could feel valued and loved. In the middle of the crowd, Jesus said, your faith has healed you. You are a daughter, a child of God. And he gave her identity. She left feeling healed and whole. That took a while, and as she was leaving and healed, then comes the friends of Jairus and told him, too late, your daughter has died. You can see that in verse 49. So Jesus said, don't worry, her death is not for long. So we see Jesus again going into the house, finding the little girl, calling her back to life, and now a girl is resurrected in life again, whole again. So do you see that just in one chapter in the book of Luke, Dr. Luke is telling the story of one day in Jesus' life, miracle, healing after healing after healing. This is what Jesus was doing. This was his ministry. And so it is that in the very next chapter, Luke chapter 9, verse 2, he now tells his disciples, 
Now you go and do the same. Go preach and go heal. И дальше мы видим, что Господь посылает уже своих учеников и последователей также проповедовать, нести весть о Царстве Божьем и исцелять больных. So it is that the very third reason of this message of health that we have received is that we are called to heal as Jesus did and fulfill the mission in this earth. Just like the time when Jesus came 2,000 years ago, today the world is still broken and needs healing. There is still people feeling rejected and unloved. And I want to show to you, I don't know if you will hear, but I will see if this is on, a little video that shows what's happening in the world. Actually, I'll leave that. This is the world being created in the beginning. And the world was with God. And the world was You can translate that if you wish. Everything was perfect. The animals, nature, everything in harmony. Can you imagine how beautiful it was? All the animals living in harmony. The beautiful nature. Earth was whole, but unfortunately, as we said earlier, until the course of humanity changed. So the result, as we saw, is brokenness. And ever since then, we have experienced, and this is a historical account, they were let go from the garden. Ужасные ураганы на 
наркотики, пробки в городах, пожары сильные. Люди разрушают свои жизни. such a time as this. So, just like Jesus came to this earth in such a time that God attended and saw fit, today we are in this world for this time to bring a message of healing. Many are asking, is there hope? We're in the middle of chaos and war and all kinds of hurting and death and illness. Is there hope? They're asking. And many times we have a tendency as a church to be like these people here in the beach, enjoying our good message, enjoying hope that we have. However, people are drowning right in our communities around us. So God is saying this health message, this message, this ministry of healing is for now to bring hope, to change the community. And he gives us a beautiful promise in the book of Isaiah 58, verse 10 and 11. And I'm going to just briefly go through these verses, starting in verse 9. And this is the New King James Version, so it's got some modern uh, way of saying things. Remember, when God wrote this, Isaiah wrote this, the people were in captivity and they were coming back to Israel after the Babylon uh, uh, time that they spent. There was a lot of destruction and brokenness. So in verse, 50, uh, verse 9 it says, If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and speaking of wickedness. And in verse 10 it says, If you extend your soul to the hungry and you satisfy the afflicted soul. Then your darkness will um, li then your light will dawn in the darkness. And your darkness will be as the noonday. And it goes on, the Lord will guide you continually. 
He will satisfy your soul in drought. Anybody here feels that your soul is in drought? You're thirsty? You're going through life as if you're in a dry land with no water? God is promising that He will satisfy our soul in drought if we do this, if we look for the needy around us. And He continues, He will strengthen your bones. You will be like a water garden. Like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. And then we come to verse 12, which I'm going to read from the Message Bible. It says, I will give you a full life in the emptiest of places. You will be known as those who can fix anything, restore old ruins, rebuild and renovate. And you will be known as those that can make the community livable again. In other words, for this time, when people are broken with physical illness, mental health problems, with financial issues, when people are coming from the consequences of war, struggling with lost ones, lost life, lost jobs. God is saying, if you do this, your life will be transformed. And you can help the community be livable again. See, God says that He needs men and women who will be agents of representing Him, His character to the world. That we can change and make a difference in around us with those that are in need. And the world needs a manifestation of Jesus' love, a revelation of Christ. In fact, Ellen White in the book Ministry of Healing says the world needs what it needed when Jesus came 2,000 years ago. And that's only through His grace that we'll be able to bring restoration and also not just physical restoration, but restoration of mind and spirit. So, dear ones, this was Jesus' method. And going back to Luke 10, now, another chapter in the book of Luke, Jesus, after he pointed his disciple, he's now attended and called 70 other people to go out in the towns and follow his ministry. So he said, go to each house, say shalom to them. Говоря, что идите, несите весть, идите каждый дом, провозглашайте эту весть, несите 
And if you are welcome into the house, then heal the sick and share with them the message of hope. This was his method. He would come, build that friendship, meet the needs of people, share love, and then invite them to follow him. So today the Seventh-day Adventist Church wants to use this message of health as a way to be Jesus today. And Ellen White describes what this medical missionary work is about. She says that we should have a cheerful countenance as we come in contact with people. That we should share hopeful words. That we should touch people and grasp their hand. That we should share with them, uh, speak with them, pray with them, bring them to Jesus. And she says, this is the kind of medical missionary work to be done. Now, some people may say, but where is the vegetarian diet? And where is the charcoal treatment and hydrotherapy? She is very clear. More obviously, those things are important and have their role. But more than that, medical missionary work is about how we minister to people. Are we, like Jesus, sharing compassion and love and meeting their needs? This is what medical missionary work is about. Now today in the Adventist Church we have changed this term, replaced this term with the term comprehensive health ministry. Because many people would look at medical missionary work and think, oh, this is for the doctors, this is for the health people, not for me. So now it's not about medical missionary, it's comprehensive health ministry, which means everybody should be involved. Not just the health, they are also important, but also the pastors, the ministries, women's ministry, children's ministry, youth ministries, all of the ministries. Also, our teachers and our lay members and our children and our youth and our elderly people. All are called to do comprehensive health ministry and be involved. And so, 
what do we define? What is comprehensive health ministry? The definition we use is just Jesus' ministry, is meeting people's needs in a practical way, sharing God's love and compassion. We have to find out, do they have a physical need? Then we'll meet the physical need, a physical illness or something. But they have a mental or emotional need or financial need or social need. We need to be able to meet that as well. The point, the point is that we need to do this in love because Jesus said here in John 13 to 34, 35, Verse 35, he says, you sh this is how they will know you're my disciples, because you love one another. If you have love and unselfish concern for one another, so it doesn't matter if you eat as a total vegetarian and if you exercise, if you know everything about the doctrines, but you don't have love. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, you're nothing. So there are many people that call themselves health reformers, but they don't demonstrate this love. Have you met anybody like that? You look at them, they look so serious. You're not doing this right. You're not eating that right. You have to do this. There is no compassion, no love, no grace. This is not comprehensive health ministry. We can know all things and do all right, but if we don't have love, we are not doing Jesus' ministry. We have to be a loving community that communicates Jesus' love so people can see. And then we can bring them hope with empathy, compassion and service we can then be Jesus' hands today. And we can make the community livable again. In this text, in Desire of Ages, Ellen White says, When we love the world as Jesus did, then our mission is accomplished. So today, as we close, we as a church are trying to reach the world. In the health ministries department and in comprehensive health ministry, we are trying to share wholeness and serve all. Just like Jesus in the book of Luke, Chapter 10, sent the 70, now in John 20, 21 says, He is also sending you. As he finished his ministry in this earth, he was with his disciples. 
И так как он закончил свое служение на его примерах, то же так же важнее это делать и его последователям. And he told him one last time, as the Father sent me, now you go and you be my hands. И тут же так же Господь четко дал указание о том, что как меня послал Отец, так сейчас я посылаю вас, и вы будете орудием в руках моих. So this is the invitation today for you and for me. Это приглашение для каждого из нас, для вас, для меня. We learn that this message is for you to have health and longevity. We also learn that this health message is for you to glorify God. And we now have seen and learned too that this message is to fulfill the mission that Jesus had and the God had for this world. For such a time as this, when the world is broken and needs hope. So he wants us first to embrace this message but he wants us also to share it with love and compassion. And the beautiful result is a promise in the Ministry of Healing, page 143. It says that if we do this, and we have the power of persuasion, the power of prayer, and the power of the love of God. This work of sharing the gospel through the health message will not, cannot be without fruit. Now, maybe you say, oh, I don't want to, I don't think this is important and I don't want to be part of comprehensive health ministry. There are many people that don't want to embrace the truth that will set them free. But I pray, and I want to pray now with you, uh, that all of the, all of those that are here, that you will be blessed to take to heart this message because the time is near. So if you are here this morning and you think I want to be ready when Jesus comes and I want to help fulfill the mission, I want to embrace the health message more in my life, I want you to stand and pray together with us. Heavenly Father, you see some people raising to say, yes, we want to be part of fulfilling the message for this world. They're saying, yes, I will go reach the world. They are saying, I want to share wholeness and serve all. So Lord, as we unite ourselves, we realize we need the Holy Spirit to help us change certain things in our lives. 
Дорогой Господь, ты видишь, что в этом желании нам необходимо иметь Духа Святого для того, чтобы изменить свои жизни и привнести это весь спасение в действие. We want to live this message, but we also want to share this message with love and grace and compassion. Мы хотим не просто выполнять эту нести эту весть, но мы также хотим делиться твоей милостью, любовью, сочувствием, сопереживанием, милосердием. So please help us to share your love and really be able to manifest your character among those that live around us in this community. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.